Welcome to the New Day broadcast. It's a new day, right? And I'm so glad that you tuned in. I'm so glad that you took the time to govern yourselves accordingly, to bring yourself to this moment. Now listen, I want to share this message with you that God has given me to share with you. And before I do that, I want to say shout out to all the fathers. Happy Father's Day. We hope you have a great day. And if your father has passed and made their transition, I'm praying for you that as you remember them, that you remember them and all the good things that they did to your life and added to your life. Now listen, we're in our new mini series entitled The Hope of Progress. So I want you to get ready to hear this message entitled A Father's Hope. And right after this video, I'll be right back to give you today's message once again entitled A Father's Hope. The video that you're gonna be watching is entitled A New Creation. So you don't have to let things in your past dictate your future. I'll see you in a few. We are a new creation, not bound by the mistakes of the past. Our failures do not dictate our future. There is no mistake that Jesus cannot turn into beauty. He is the brush and we are the paint. With him, our blemishes are washed clean. Freedom is ours through Jesus. Let him be the sculptor and us the clay, carving away our selfish ways the creator of the earth molding us into a work of art, a one-of-a-kind masterpiece brought to life. In us is unlimited potential that God can use. You were made with marvelous intricacy. You are beautiful and valued. God has orchestrated a tailor-made plan for your life. May a symphony of love and kindness follow you. Reach out to Christ and grab this life. Walk confidently in the knowledge that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Because God's plan for your life is filled with hope and a future. All right, so listen, a father's, a new creation, right? That video was right on time, right? And so you don't have to let anything in your past dictate or determine your future. Whatever mistakes, whatever sin, whatever things you did wrong in your past, they do not have to determine nor define your future because God and in Christ, everyone is made new. Now listen, as I stated earlier, I wanna share with you this message entitled A Father's Hope. Yeah, A Father's Hope. On this Father's Day, as we talk about the hope of progress, I want to talk about a father's hope. Now listen, remember, progress is measured, sustained, forward movement in the right direction. Again, progress is measured, sustained, forward movement in the right direction. And then last week and the week before, we gave you a definition for hope. The Bible says that hope is a confident expectation of good, that you have a confident expectation of good that things are going to happen in your life. And that's biblical hope. So it's not the world definition of hope where you're wishing and you're you know, crossing your fingers or you may have a you know, good luck charm and you're just hoping things work out. No, when you have biblical hope, you have a confident expectation of good, which I like to call Godfidence. Now listen, as we talk about the Father's hope, I want you to pay attention to this. Just in case you didn't know it, just in case you missed it, I want you to be very clear today, and I want to drive home this message, that your hope of progress, the confident expectation that you're going to move forward, and you're going to move forward in a goodly way, in the right direction, that hope, saints of God, listen, that hope is always going to be under attack. That confident expectation will always be under constant assault by the enemy and his forces. Things that are going to work against you, negativity. Even sometimes people, negative people, toxic people can work against your cope and work against your confidence. And so I want you to understand that it's always going to be under attack and under assault because the adversary does not want to see you progress. Fathers, the adversary doesn't want to see you progress. Mothers, sisters, brothers, children, youth, the enemy does not want to see you progress. 
during the summertime, he does not want to see you progress. He doesn't want to see you, you know, get a summer job and do well. He doesn't want to see you uh, take some classes. He doesn't want to see you move forward in your job or move forward in the dream or move forward in the plans that God has for you. You know, that future, that hope that God has for you. Well, the enemy doesn't want you to move forward in that. So what he's going to do, he's going to cause certain things to happen in your life in order to tempt you to quit. He's going to stir up opposition. He's going to stir up obstacles in your life. He's going to send forces that are going to be adversarial to you in order to discourage you. Now, we know that in life, you know, as people say, life be life, in, that we're going to be disappointed. So disappointment comes with life. But discouragement is where you, your spirit man, your soul man gets weak and gets discouraged to the point that you want to quit and give up. And that's where the enemy wants you to be. The enemy wants you to be on this Father's Day, on this week. The enemy wants you to be discouraged. And so I've come to tell you that you don't have to worry about that. I've come to tell you right now that there are two things working on your behalf. What are they? I'm glad you asked. First of all, I want you to understand that there is an internal agent inside of you called the Holy Spirit. And then there are also external agencies outside of you that are defined as like your family, your peers, your colleagues, your associates. You know, people that you work with, people that you hang out with, those are the external agencies, your environment, your surrounding that can what bolster your hope, can give you some confidence. But I want to zero in on the internal agency, which are the supernatural things, the things of the spirit, you know, the things in your, your mental capacity, your mindset, your heart set, what you feel inside of you, what you think inside of you. Those are the internal things that's going to help you watch this move forward with confidence. Because when you have the internal agencies working for you, I'm here to tell you that it will overflow on the outside. These internal agencies are powered by the Holy Spirit, are powered by God. They come through prayer, through reading of the word of God, through meditation. When you do yoga and you do some meditation, that's where your internal spirit gets stronger because you're spending time developing your soul and the internal agencies of the spirit. It's like when you wouldn't read the word of God you're going to get revelation, knowledge, and understanding. But the external agencies are information and data. And so I want to, you to understand that the enemy is going to try to work against your internal as well as your external. Now, as a believer, what you need to know is that your internal agencies is where your hope is going to come from. It's where your strength is going to come from. And in life, you're going to need both the internal and the external agencies in order to develop goals, in order to develop objectives, and make a strategy and a plan to pursue those goals with confidence and with hope. So you're gonna need both of them working for you. You're gonna need the internal and you're gonna need the external. Now what happens in this council culture is that the enemy is gonna to try to cancel your hope. I said in this council culture, the enemy is gonna to try to cancel your hope. And how's he going to do that? He's going to use people. He'll even use the words that you say to yourself. Yeah. Sometimes we say so much negative things to ourselves that we cancel our own hope. We check ourselves out of the game before we even get started. We eliminate, we call it a self-check back in the day where you don't even enter the game because you didn't got all psyched out in your mind that you don't feel there's a reason for you to even enter the game that you have no chance of winning but the devil is a liar. And so what you got to learn to do is make sure that your internal agencies are working for you and not against you. You got to watch that self-talk. You got to watch who you listen to and what you listen to. You got to watch what you watch. Pay attention to what you're thinking about. And so I want to share with you right now that what I'm talking about today, a father's hope is not positive thinking. I'm not talking about hope theory. I'm talking about a hope that God gives you where you can declare that as a child of God, I have a confident expectation of good, that good things are going to happen in my life because it's not based on my external surroundings. It's based on my internal agency of the supernatural and the power of God working in me that I have this hope and this confidence because I believe that all things work together for my good. Now, I'm going to give you three life work principles and we'll be finished for today. Fathers, tune in and lean in. Mothers, tune in and lean in. And everyone, just tune in and lean in. The first life work principle is hope is a gift that God expects you to use. Hope is a gift that God expects you to use. 
You have to take responsibility for the gift that God has given you. You have to be accountable for what God has given you. And so it's so important that you understand that, that you have to be responsible and accountable for what he's given to you. So he expects you to use it. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Watch this. Romans 15, 13 says in the Amplified Translation, it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in his promises. Did you hear what God said? Number one, God says, I will fill you. First of all, he says, I'm the God of hope. Hallelujah. God is the God of hope. God is a God of confident expectations of good. And he says, I'm going to fill you with joy and peace. Now, notice what he says. He says, I'm going to fill you with joy and peace. So he's immediately working on your internal agencies. So because joy is not happiness. Happiness is connected to happenstance. So if things happen to go your way, then you're happy. But joy is internal. That even if things don't work out the way you thought they should, you still have joy. Peace that peace that surpasses all understanding. Although both of those things are internal happenings where God is working in you. So he says, I'm going to fill you with all joy and all means all, all peace as you are believing, as you are trusting in me, as you are relying on me. He says, I'm going to fill you. And he says, I'm going to do this by the internal agency of the Holy Spirit. He says, it's going to be through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will abound. Now watch that, saints. It says that you're going to abound. So what happens? Internally, as God through the Spirit is working in you, hope is going to abound. That means it's going to increase. That means it's going to get greater. The longer you wait, the greater your hope is going to become. The tougher things get, the greater your hope is going to come because the word of the Lord says it's going to abound. Now watch this thing. It's going to bow and then it's going to overflow. So what's inside of you is going to overflow on the outside. So what are you talking about? I'm saying that what's in you is going to what? Overflow and manifest on the outside. So summing up life work principle number one, hope is a gift that God expects you to use. Through the internal agency of the Holy Spirit, he wants you to abound in hope and overflow in confidence in the promises of God. You can have Godfidence because you are focusing on the promises of God and not the things of the world. Life work principle number two, there is a hope in Jesus when life be lifing. Listen to what Mark says in Mark's gospel, uh, chapter five, verse 21 through 24 in the message version. It says, after Jesus crossed over by a boat, a large crowd met him at the seaside. One of the meeting place leaders named Jairus came. When he saw Jesus, watch this, he fell to his knees beside himself and he asked or begged. My dear daughter is at death's door, he said. Come and lay hands on her so she will get well and live. Jesus went with him, the whole crowd tagging along, pushing and jostling. Three things I want to point out here. The first thing is there's always hope in Jesus. Whenever life is life and whenever trauma comes in your life, whenever things come, adverse situations come up in your life, I want you to understand. Now, like this man, you cannot literally go to Jesus, but what you can do is pray. That's what, that's what this is. This encounter that this man Jairus has, this father has with Jesus can be formed and fashioned as a prayer today. So fathers, listen to me. When life comes at you, and it comes at you hard. When you get that curveball, when you get the wind knocked out of you, when the bills come, and when things come and challenge you, when your relationships get rough, when things come to challenge you, you need to know that you have hope in Jesus. So you what? He's what? A prayer away. You have to begin to pray. You have to begin to hope in Jesus. And that's what this father did. This father did not get on the phone and call somebody else. This father went to Jesus. So what does that mean? That means you have to go to Jesus first. Before you do anything else, you need to first go into prayer. Pray about it. Talk to God about it. Listen to what God is saying. So when he goes to God, he was, he was, he was shooting straight. He says, listen, my daughter is at death's door and I need you to come and lay hands on her and, 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 and she will get well and she will live. 
See, saints of God, I need you to understand that hope has a voice. Yes, you have to decree and declare what you're expecting God to do. In your prayer, this father was so clear, he decreed it. He said, this is what I believe. He said, I believe that if you come and lay hands on her, she will get well and live. She's on death's door. She's knocking on death's door. She's one step away. She's on life support. She's on death's door. That situation that you're in is hopeless, but there is a hope that you have in Jesus. So go ahead and declare what you believe and what you're expecting God for. See, you have to be really confident. And so this man says, I believe that if you come and lay hands on her, she will get well. And not only get well, she will live. She's on death door. A father's hope is where you're able to go to Jesus in prayer. You're able to look at that situation, take that situation to Jesus in prayer, and then be so confident, not in yourself, but in God and in the promises of God that you believe in the power of God that you can open up your mouth and declare what you're expecting. I'm telling you right now in Jesus' name, I'm expecting something good to come in my life as a father. I'm expecting something and I'm praying that you would expect the same thing, that something good would come for you and come towards you in your life. And so he declares it and then watch what happens. Hope, Jesus, hallelujah, took that confidence and the Bible says he started walking with the father. Someone say progress. That's right. Put it in the chat. Progress. So what did they do? He goes to Jesus. He tells Jesus what he needs. And then they're now walking towards his home. Progress. Life work principle number three and the last life work principle. Don't let life and the traumas of life take your hope. Watch this. Mark 5, verse 35 to 43. It says, while he was still talking, he is Jesus. Some people came from the leader's house, Jairus, and told him, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Wait a minute. He just got Jesus to go with him. And now they're coming with this negative news saying your daughter is dead. Why bother? Don't even make the trip. Tell Jesus he ain't got to come because your daughter is dead. She was on death's door. And now she has transpired. She's died. But watch this. Hallelujah. Verse 36. The Bible says Jesus overheard what they were talking about and said to the leader. He turned to Jairus and said to Jairus, he says, don't listen to them. Just trust me. How many of you need to hear God say that today? Don't listen to them. Don't focus on that. I'm not saying pretend that it's not there. Jesus is not, is not saying pretend. He said, he's not saying pretend that what they said didn't, they didn't mean. You know, live in some fantasy world. He says, just don't listen to them. Don't focus on that. Don't take your hope, your confidence, that energy that you have expecting something good to happen and then turn it on the thing that someone has said to you. He says, don't listen to them. And then verse 37, he, Jesus, permitted no one to go with him except Peter, James, and John. They entered the leader's house, pushed their way through the gossips, looking for a story and neighbors bringing in casseroles. Jesus was abrupt. Why all this busybody grief and gossip? This child isn't dead. She's sleeping. Provoked to sarcasm, they told him he didn't know what he was talking about. Verse 40, but when he had sent them all out, he took the child's father and mother along with the companions and entered the child's room. He clapped the girls, clasped the girl's hand and said, Talitha Kaum, which means little girl, get up. And that she was up and walking around, this girl was 12 years old. First of all, I want to say here, you maintain the hope by not giving your attention to what others say or to what the enemy does. A lot of times we become hopeless because we're listening to naysayers. We listen to the negativity. We listen to people talk their talk, talk you down, talk against your dream, talk against your confidence, talk against what you believe in God for. You hold on and you maintain your hope by not listening to them. Secondly, when your hope is undergirded by your faith, you begin to operate in authority. What did Jesus do? The Bible says Jesus didn't permit any of those people that brought that bad news to go with them. See, listen, you got to stop letting negativity ride with you. 
You got to stop letting people that are, you know, raining on your parade, talking about this ain't going to happen. This is impossible. Don't let them hang out with you. Stop. Separate yourself from toxic people. Separate yourself from negative thinking. Separate yourself from people that are speaking contrary to what you are believing God for. How do you do that? You take authority over it. Take authority over it. Tell them, yeah, thank you very much. And you keep on moving. Stop them right there. Don't let them ride with you. And then the final thing is the father's hope of progress was not taken from him by life and by life's traumas and by the enemy nor people. Why? Because he kept his focus on Jesus. He kept his hope on what Jesus said. He kept his hope on the promises of Jesus. And because of that, his hope was not taken from him. Fathers, hear me today. I know it gets tight. I'm a father. I know what it feels like. Even as your children grow older, you still have a hope and a confidence. And things and choices that they make, your children make, or life comes, and it's coming to dash your hope. But don't let your hope be taken from you. Hold on to it. And do you know in the words of Tasha Cobbs, he's in the room. Well, when Jesus walked in the room and put all the doubters, all the gossipers out of the room, he pushed past all of them. The Bible says he told her to get up. And the Bible said, remember in Romans 15, hope begins to abound and hope begins to overflow. So I want to tell you, keep your hope, fathers. Keep your hope, mothers. Keep your hope, people of God. Keep your hope in Jesus because God has some good coming in your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for this time to spend this word and share this word with your people. I pray today, Lord God, that the word was effectual. I pray, Lord God, that it added value to their lives. And now I pray for salvation. I pray your perfect will be done. I pray, Lord God, that your spirit move. And I pray that every believer and listener would have hope, a confident expectation of good, and that it will abound and overflow into Godfidence. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it is so. Listen, if you prayed the prayer and you want to be connected to Christ, or you want to be connected to this ministry, just follow the information right there on the screen and we'll be reach out to you. We'll be sure to let, you know, get a response back to you so that you can be added to the role because we want you to be connected to Christ, connected to his church and connected to his commission, which is ministry. Next, I want to thank you all that have given and I want to encourage you to give today that if you're blessed, if the word added value to your life, if you're so inclined, sow a seed, give an offering. And we thank you for that in advance in Jesus' name. Well, listen, that's my time for today. I'm so glad again that you tuned in to this broadcast. And I pray that it's added value to your life. And remember, a father's hope, a father's expectations, according to the word of God, cannot be cut off in Jesus' name. It is so. And so it is. Amen.